Hello friends, channel members and dear flight simulators, welcome back to another video in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Before we start talking about the video, I hope everybody had great time during Thanksgiving and they had a wonderful Thanksgiving with their families and my best wishes to you all and your families. I hope you enjoyed it all. What we are going to do today is we are going to take the black square analog king gear for another spin to take a look at some options we got with the aircraft uh, and if you want to do conventional radio navigation which I enjoy doing a lot and don't want to use any GPS based flight plan we'll discuss how we are going to navigate the virtual skies using just the uh, nav radios and we will be departing from where we are at which is San Luis Kiney Regional Airport in the southern United States and our destination will be to Hollywood Burbank Airport but this is roughly 150 mile flight and we will be only using VORs and pretty much radio navigation and we won't use any GPS based flight plan or anything like that so without further ado let's hop into the cockpit let's get let's get the aircraft started and then we will discuss what we are going to do all right we are in the cockpit it's super silent in here i probably need to increase the sim volume a little bit but we can open a window to break the silence a little bit so we are in the cockpit of the analog king air and as you see we only have nav radios no gps units like the 750 or gns 530 etc so we will be using these two radios to navigate the virtual skies today and we will discuss how we are going to do so after starting our engines you have seen how i started the engines before uh, you can stay here if you don't want to stay here you don't have to but my thinking is i'll start one engine cut the video short and then uh, when engines are up and running i'll bring you guys back just to save you some time and use it use the time a little bit more efficiently remember from the last uh, video we moved the prop levers to uh, to idle not higher rpm ground idle and then we will uh, break open the throttles and provide power to the aircraft and take it from there i'm not following a checklist you can follow a checklist if you want but for the purpose of this video we are not focusing on a close to real life cold and dark startup so if i'm making any mistakes please forgive me but they are not intentional they are just there because i decided not to spend too much time starting the aircraft up so again prop levers out of feather position throttles will crack open them we will then come over here and we won't do any of the tests that we did with the generators and auto ignition and whatnot so battery to on that provides us with DC power. Now we can turn on our landing nav lights on and we are about to start the engine so we'll turn the beacon on. Nose gear, oh, landing gear is down. We are seeing green, left, right nose, three greens over here. Uh, the aircraft is going through some built-in self-test right now, but we can start uh, talking about the engines and starting the engines. From this side, we don't have to do anything just yet. Uh, we can check the battery voltage, which is reading around 25 volts, so that should be fine. And we can continue with starting the engines. So what? Remember what we did last time? We'll turn the engine anti-ice on when starting the engines. 
it's quite warm over here southern USA close to Florida uh, close to I'm sorry south coast so warm temperatures but well we'll just follow what we did last time just to be consistent you might even not need the anti-ice because it's warm outside there is no risk of ice that might damage the engine so but I'm just following what we did last time to remind you uh, engine anti-ice is on so that is a good sign we'll arm the auto ignition auto ignition is now armed and then we will start the right engine first we are watching the RPM and watching the propeller when it reaches 20 we will go to low idle and it should fire up the engine or the turbines rather this is a turboprop when we are passing 50% we can disengage the starter we don't need it anymore and when we are a little bit more stable around 60-61% we can put the right generator on and this ticking is coming from the auto ignition so if I turn it off it should go away if you are curious what that is but now we have right generator running DC load is taken care of but the by the right gen our batteries should be charging and I keep doing this mistake I need to hold it over here um, looking fine so we can go ahead and continue with starting the left engine we'll pull or move the right engine to high idle and then do the same thing uh, anti-ice we don't need it anymore we don't need the left engine anti-ice anyway but we will follow the same thing and start the engine and I'll bring you guys back when both engines are running okay welcome back friends we have both engines running we haven't turned on the turned on the avionics master switch yet and just a reminder you might ask like if it's not going to uh, be icing conditions outside why are you turning on engine anti-ice this aircraft engine anti-ice works like an inertial separator which means it's going to block the um, the engine air intakes and when you turn the engine anti-ice on you are reducing the risk of sucking in debris or foreign material into the engine so that's why anyway avionics master we can turn it on and now we are ready to discuss how we are going to navigate those radio navigation uh, aids that I was talking about so again we will depart from runway I have to check the wind but it is going to be probably runway 11 if not we will do runway 2 9 -er, and then we have to turn around but we'll take a look at that and I can probably share my flight plan routing with you here in a second so let me switch the views to show you what I have planned the aircraft can keep working or running down right there so we are here San Luis County we will if we take runway 1 1 we will fly runway heading and we need to turn right to intercept this course to our first VOR station which is down below over here and that is the Guadalupe Santa Maria VOR 113.05 so that's the first thing we need to tune to our nav radio we'll do that in a second and from there what we will need to enter is for the, sorry about that auto zoom of little nav map uh, 145 is the course we need to follow to find that VOR so when we reach this VOR we will track it outbound on course 109 -er. and in the meantime we can tune the second one which is about 100 miles away and that would be the Ventura VOR right here 108 decimal 20 so that will be our standby okay 108 decimal 20 on standby 
or you can yeah uh, we can use we will use the nav 2 but for nav 1 radio 113 decimal 05 that's uh, primary or active and then this one Ventura VOR 108 decimal 20 that's going to be standby so let's switch to view again and get back into the cockpit and we will start with tuning our first frequency all right that was I already forgot by the way 113 decimal 05 113 decimal 05 you can transfer and that should pick up a signal if not it will when we take off and up in there and the second one was um, Ventura VOR which is 108 decimal 20 so we will tune date 108 decimal 20 to standby so what we'll do on nav 2 is going to be the opposite so we will tune 108 decimal 2 as the active so that we get a notification or we get a signal we will know that we are receiving the signal from that VOR and we can switch frequencies and we will keep 113.05 on standby so that if something goes wrong we can switch frequencies and get to this upon departure we will be climbing up to 8000 and I'm thinking about a cruising level of 16000 that should be I think that should be accurate with or on in alignment with our direction of travel so that's that and the last thing I lost my headphones I hope you guys are still hearing me and if it's, I hope the audio is still being recorded but I'm not getting any audio from my headphones anyway I will live with that so that's the nav radios taken care of we are not worried about the arms we are not using ATC today transponder we will keep it at standby 1200 is fine we don't have ATC prop sync we can sync the props prior to takeoff and that is pretty much us being ready for departure oh one thing we haven't done is the course which is 145 we need to tune here so if we get closer heading he heading this is the heading bug so we can set it to our course right so 145 is roughly here and then we will set our course to 145 That's 150, that's 145. Hmm. This side, let's see if we have the option to we'll keep it at VOR. That's our, and we can change this to 145 so that we know how we are tracking. So that's 145. I'm not sure if there is anything else we can do to make this track uh, up. Course 148, that's not quite bad. 145, that's it. And autopilot, we will use. We can use the nav. But this is just the DME, so 113.05. One, one, Let's see if we can get the DME reading here as well. And we'll change it to VOR. And do we have an autopilot? That's what I'm looking for right now. Oh yeah, it's over here. Pro pilot. Everything is looking good now. You also have the course needles and so yeah, we'll keep it at elapsed time. That's fine. 
all right we are pretty much ready now and we can taxi and take off I'll taxi to the runway I think I'm gonna take runway 11 and uh, depart and follow runway heading and then turn right to 145 I'll see you at the threshold I'll see you at the hold short here in a, here in a little bit all right, we are holding short and runway 1-1. Actually, the wind was favoring the other end of the runway, but we'll be fine. It's not so strong, so we will be taking off with slight tail wind, but it is fine. Uh, what we need to do before takeoff, I already armed the auto ignition and auto feather. That's done. A prop governor test, we are not going to do it. What we will do, though, is we will... Come down here and activate rudder boost and pitch trim. That is done. We'll check the annunciators. Engine fuel transfer. That's fine. That's yeah. That's okay. Reverser is not ready. Ignition. Air conditioning low. Blah 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 blah. So we'll turn the cabin master that that should do it we have the bleed air valves open stall warning test we have done that or i have done that before coming here so next up is to turn on our landing lights and strobes that's strobe that's landing lights and we can enter the runway now what we will do is we will pull the uh, fuel levers to high idle. We are getting ready to take off. We'll pull the to full forward, uh, prop levers to full forward or propeller pitch to full forward. We have set the QNH 1017. Actually, that is, I believe, yep, that's the US version because we are in the US 3006. Uh, reading 200 elevation runway elevation or airport elevation which is correct we have the we are tuned we haven't we are not receiving any signal just yet from our primary but when we are up in the air we should see that coming around so um anything else do i have to do over here nope the trim is checked these trims are checked no flaps uh, EDF, we are not gonna need it today. Oh, uh, yeah. the cruising altitude or cabin altitude, I haven't set that, so we will be flying at um, aircraft altitude. Uh, we are flying at 16,000, so that's that. Not too much pressurization is required today and that was the last thing so we'll pull the throttles or start increasing the throttles and we are going to do this a bit slowly we don't want to over torque the engines and maintain the center line auto feather is now armed we see the green lights and that is enough we passed 90 knots so we can now pull back on the yoke and that's positive rate gear is now coming up so I'm gonna set my I'm gonna set my heading to 145 that's why I set it to there and we should start picking up the signal so we are passing 500 and we started to pick up the VOR signal which is nice so we will turn around to 145 that's the heading and we will be off a little bit because of our uh, initial uh, heading so we will keep going until we get the needle so I need to turn the autopilot on to explain all of this to you so that needle is showing that we are left of the flight plan uh, routing so which means i need to keep turning right to intercept that and that's number one and that's too much banking by the way and we should see this needle 
So if I, as I'm going like this, we should see this nasal coming to the center. And that's when we know uh, we are on course. So as you see, it's coming towards the center slowly. I need to reduce my vertical speed a little bit. And then now it is time to slowly turn to heading 145 here in a little bit so that needle is moving very slowly and I can also use my autopilot by activating now climb and autopilot and yaw damper engage and now climb and that should center us with the course so that should give us the, the course we are not reading any DME information because I think the first one we have here is not a, a VOR DME. We can turn off the taxi lights and we will keep the landing lights for a little bit more and then we will turn them off. Passing 5000 and we are following that course to the the VOR. We are not reading any DME, so this probably is not a DME, VOR DME, it is just a VOR, which is fine. How we are going to know we are at that VOR? By the way, let me take care of the throttles and RPM a little bit. I'll pull the, the RPM just, just a little bit back to 1600 and then add a little bit more torque for maximum climb so how we are going to know this needle will turn back or flip around when we are overhead that VOR so that's how we know we are at that VOR and we passed it so we are coming up to 8000 we will increase this to 16 and keep going we can climb further now and just watching uh, to see how the needles will react to what we are doing. We don't need auto ignition anymore. We don't need auto feather. Yes, auto feather OS. Oh, and the oxygen. I keep forgetting in this aircraft we need to arm the oxygen. We'll keep the auto feather. We don't need auto feather after takeoff. We will turn it on during landing. So, passing 8000. Yes, I know. I turned off auto feather, so that's fine. The aircraft is correcting for wind uh, to stay on course. We can take a look at the weather. We shouldn't have any precipitation or anything like that. So 9700, we can turn off the landing lights now. That should be landing lights off. And yes, we are en route. And flying nicely, climbing to our cruising altitude of 16,000 feet. This aircraft climbs like crazy, by the way. Good power setting here. Everything looks okay, although the oil pressure is getting into the red a little bit. So we might want to pull back on the torque just a little bit and do it at 90 torque to relieve the engines a little bit and reduce some oil pressure or drop the oil pressure a little bit and just watching this needle now so we are coming out up to that VOR and this needle will going to flip around you'll see that here in a second this one is already gone and when we are overhead and passing over that VOR, you'll see this needle going backwards. That's when we are going to set the course to 109er. And we might drop off now. Did we lost it? I see that needle flipped. This one hasn't done anything yet and I'm not sure if if this is gonna up oh, there you go
that needle flipped and if you see the arrow it's showing backwards now so we are going to set 109er and we should get back on course in the meantime we can check the standby here channel 1, channel 2, channel 3 ID, yep that's the same VOR station we are about to get to our altitude which is fine, we dropped on speed a little bit and let's see what we have here same stuff, channel 2 nothing identified just yet alright so 109er and we dropped out of nav looks like it so we'll go back to nav the aircraft should follow the course Apparently we are not following the course. Nav climb. Let's see what happens. Now we should be turning towards left to intercept the pad. And what I can do to help the aircraft get there is I can go to heading mode right and then I can fly a heading that's a little bit to the left and you will see this needle coming around when I do that looks like we are picking the signal from the second one in it it's trying to see if we are but well, we'll see about that here in a second. I'm just gonna focus on getting back on the course. So watch this needle. We are on autopilot, so I'm not worried about hitting somewhere. As you see, this needle is coming closer to the center. And that's when I'm going to set the heading to 109er. Just a little bit more. I can start slowly turning towards that heading and slowly center the aircraft and let's see what happens when I go nav right now there we go now the aircraft is back on course and we are we climbed a little bit past 16,000 okay Maybe we should cut the throttles a little bit actually this is a good cruise setting though 85% torque, 1600 RPM, turbine RPM is looking good, oil pressure is looking good, we should be fine. Am I picking the signal from the other one? And what we can do is while we are here, we can set the heading to our current heading, momentarily switch to heading mode, and what we can do is I can switch frequencies to see if I am receiving a signal. Are we getting an ident? No. That's interesting. So we are not receiving anything from that station yet. three decimal five transfer this now that we are receiving the signal yes we can go back to nav now and the aircraft will correct for the course and looks like we are going to wait until we receive this signal and this green needle goes right at our heading that's when we will know 
need to change this to 109er and that's when we will know we are receiving the signal from the other one and let's see here okay, let's see what I'm reading on the co-pilot side I'm curious to see RNAV, no, not, we don't want RNAV We can keep it at ident one, two, three. Um, that is a little bit interesting. We are not picking up any signal from Ventura VORDME. So, this is a VORDME. We should see the distance, but well. I am not picking up any signal just yet. Uh, we are we are just fine cruising. There are no clouds whatsoever, and we will just wait until we see the other needle coming around. I'll keep this at ID. Are we receiving anything just yet? No. Go back to heading one more time. Switch and see if we are receiving anything. Not yet. Not yet. And looks like we are not receiving the signal from the other one as well. So this is when you just keep nav and travel along until you receive a signal. It's a little bit worrying, if you ask me. Why are we not holding the altitude? Is that the... No, pressure is still there. We are not at the transition altitude. And we are not receiving anything. This frequency keeps changing on me. I'm not sure what's going on here. We should receive the signal from that VOR by now. So either I've picked a bad VOR in the sim and there was a way to see the frequency. So let me check that and bring you guys back here in a little bit. Alright, welcome back friends. I don't know what happened, but I didn't do anything special and the aircraft decided to pick up the signal. So we are 36 miles away from our second nav aid, which we tuned and the third one is going to be 113.1, which we can now tune to our standby over here and then are active over here. Are we picking up anything from that last one? And we can cross check that with 113.1. Thing just yet. Okay. So this is what we do, 32 miles, I think we should start descending and I haven't checked what we have for in terms of approaches that are available to us. But for Burbank we will probably do a ILS to runway 08. And that looks like a reasonable plan. We need to descend down to 3000 and final approach course is 079er. 
and the frequency, the localizer frequency is 109 or decimal 5. So what we can do right now is we can set the altitude to 3000. Go down and click descent. The aircraft should automatically get into a descent mode. We need to cut the throttles a little bit. And then we will see the aircraft starting to descend. Still on nav and descent. See the aircraft starting to descend. So I can cut the throttles just a little bit more towards forty percent torque. And the RPM to fifteen hundred. And we are descending down. We're picking up the signal from the other one. 22 miles, 113 decimal 10. Nothing yet. This is a little bit interesting that we are not picking up the signal from these VORs, even though we are super close to them. By the way, we are just about so you'll see the airport this is Burbank should be over there in the distance somewhere here so we are close and we might wanna uh, do something to lose the altitude and then come back so I didn't plan the descent well, I guess. So I can cut the throttles just a little bit more to this. Uh, that's the gear warning. So this is the, the maximum uh, vertical speed we can get. Coming down to 10,000. And we have a slight change in the weather. see are we picking up anything from that that no nothing anyway we are coming up to this VOR and the next one we should go outbound on course 062 so when we get close to this current one uh, which is the Ventura VOR, 13 miles now. We will switch. Am I not seeing the other one? Oh, I am seeing it over here. So we are picking up the signal. 37 miles to oh, Van Nuys, VNV. Victor November Victor. I started picking up the signal, which is nice. So then I can switch frequencies and change the course after we are overhead and get to the next one then that will give me, uh, ourselves 28 miles to descend down to 3000 feet so that is not too bad I think we can make it I think we should be able to make it so 9 miles 9.5 and that is the other VOR I guess and the course is 062 so let me set this to 062 that sounds about right that should be on our yeah this is the second one one oh yeah it could be it could be we'll see we are coming up close below 10,000 so we should turn on the landing lights landing lights on Then coming down, passing 9000. Yeah, we still have uh, some way to go. I'm trying to see if I can spot the VOR. It should be somewhere here. Could that be the VOR? Maybe. Up on that hill. That could be our VOR station right here. Yeah, it looks like it. We should be very close, 
3 miles and you'll see the needle going and what we will do is we will switch to heading mode and then switch frequencies and then set our course and come back 2.9 2.7 and the distance will stop reading at some point we started picking up the other one as you see 30 miles 29 9 so that's good 9 minutes to get there we are at 6800 so all looking good now 1.6 and the last thing we will tune is the ILS frequency 109 or decimal 5 after switching frequencies 1.1 and you'll see the needle going backwards flipping on us and this arrow as you see it flipped now so we are overhead what we can do is go heading mode which frequencies set the new course and was it what 62 and go back to nav and we should get back on course We'll set our heading back to 062 or something close. And things are going to happen a little bit fast now. So the frequency, as I said, is 109 or decimal 5. So we'll tune it to here to standby. And we'll tune it to active after swapping these frequencies. Actually, no, let's do this. 109er decimal 5 was it? yes switch and 109er decimal 5 over on here and see if we can pick up that signal anytime soon oops we are dropping altitude quite low look at that I think we meant to drop to 3000 after passing this mountain range so that is interesting, but we'll keep the fork up to keep our speed and luckily we did not kill ourselves, so that was close though, look at that. Alright, we managed to maintain 3000, we should be back on course now, yep, we are getting there. And we should keep 3000. Maybe we descended a little bit fast. That's, that's, I have to admit, I think we did. But we are getting there. So, so now we are on course and we are looking to pick the signal from the other one, which is over here. So we are picking up that signal. So, what we can do is set our heading because that's our ILS frequency, remember. So, that's our approach. So we will go to heading and then switch frequencies are we picking it up yes we are final approach course that was 079er so we'll set the final approach course 079er is set and we can now arm our approach so click that, approach should be armed now, and the aircraft should pick up the localizer, we are reading the ident, Burbank, and we should switch and capture the localizer, and then turn to the localizer when we get there. It should automatically do this. Our speed, I am watching the speed, we need to slow down because we will be landing, so Let's cut the throttles to 40% torque and get ourselves bleed some speed, increase the RPM and that should be it, but we should slow down. Cutting the throttles even more, that's the gear warning, yep we don't want that. We will bleed off some speed now. and. Get back on course. Are we seeing the airport yet? Oh, beautiful area by the way to fly in. The airport should be somewhere over here, off in the distance. And we should 
we should wait for the localizer so this will come towards the middle and then we will capture the localizer and the aircraft will start following the localizer i am picking up the ident if you heard it i am picking up the morse, morse code very faintly very uh loud but i'm hearing it is there a way to increase this yeah just a little bit you probably are hearing this all right so now you can control the aircraft with heading and then that should get us to hopefully we will capture the localizer and start descending into Burbank Just watching that needle to see if it's going to start moving to the center. I am hearing definitely, I am hearing the ident, so I can turn that off now. Alright, moment of truth. If we did everything correctly, we should capture the localizer. We are approach is still. Oh, it's not armed. It is now armed. Now the aircraft is making some moves, and it should now capture the localizer when we get a little bit more closer. I am not reading any distance from the ILS or from the localizer. But the needle started moving, as you guys are, if you guys are seeing this, that needle is coming towards the center. And when it's at the center, that's when we capture the localizer and the aircraft should turn to the localizer. That is what I'm expecting. Right now, as you see, we are turning towards the localizer. That's the glide slope indicator right here. So this is the localizer. And we should set our final approach course over here too. Six, seven, and that should be seven niner or close. And we should see the glide slope needle coming down. And we should see it over on this side as well, from the sides I guess. And we should see the aircraft descending when we get to Oh, there was a 4000, so I descended to 3000 without knowing there was a step descent. So sorry about that, guys. Trying to do everything as a single pilot and also trying to explain this to you guys. But we should be starting our descent very shortly. I'm just watching this glide slope indicator to start coming down. And we should see the airport somewhere in the distance. We are perfectly on localizer. And airport should be right be right by that uh, mountain range or hills. White slope is now coming down. Look at this, beautiful. It is coming down, nice and steady. Let's set our heading to our final approach course or our current heading because the aircraft is doing some wind correction glide slope indicator over here too we see glide slope in green and when it's at the center we should see the aircraft descending and we bled off enough speed so we should be able to uh, drop some flaps and drop the landing gear because we are now on glide slope and localizer now we started descending, what's our missed approach altitude? Our missed approach altitude is 4600, so let's set that. Can I set this to 4600? That's the outer marker. We should start, uh, we should drop the landing gear now. That should create some drag and slow us down. We are still on glide slope. Auto feather should be armed now. Not anti ice auto ignition. Auto feather is armed. Reverser is not ready. What does that supposed to mean? I'm not sure. Landing lights are on. 
we can also turn on the taxi light at this point and look for the airport like coming down another level of flaps that should take us down so that should be the runway right in front of us I am not yep that is the runway too white too red barely visible there is an outer aircraft on approach you see that there is another aircraft so this traffic is provided by FSLTL and looks like we have some aircraft on approach too so we are slowing down too much I should add some throttle to help aircraft maintain 110 knots and that should keep us on the glide everything is looking perfect so from here on it's on us uh, what is our minimums that's the only thing I did not set our minimums for this approach is 828 so and that decision height is 828 can I set this now Eight thirty. We'll round it up. Eleven hundred feet. Altimeter is still looking okay, and I am ready to disconnect the auto autopilot anytime now. Turn on the transponder. Eleven hundred disconnecting the autopilot now okay that's not working so I need to bring the yoke this is the fun part click that okay autopilot disconnected and now I need to control my speed and uh, my wheel is messed up a little bit but we are on glide a little bit low now come back a little bit cut the speed Okay, back on, back on profile. Uh, slowly reducing the throttle. Let her sink. Lift the nose up. Bring the throttles down. Okay. Then we can put the reversers on. And there we go. Nice. Everything worked just fine, and we need to find a way to the apron. Alright, now we are crossing another runway now, and we can take this and exit. Where are the terminals? We can cycle back or take this left and find ourselves a parking spot so flaps needs to come in the flaps are coming in the radar back to standby or turn it completely off transponder goes back to standby Take this taxiway, landing lights now can be turned off along with strobe. The strobes and landing lights are off. Taxi light, we will keep it on and we'll find ourselves a parking spot. Oh, actually we passed the terminal terminal was uh, to our left so we might want to cross the runway and if you look there that is showing that it is the terminal so we'll go over there and park somewhere over there so this is default scenery so it makes sense why it's not looking right or when I'm why I am not able to spot the terminal but according to Navigraph charts that I have here we should take this last left cross the runway and then terminal should be in front of us right in front of us so let's do that go to the other side one more time 
And there is no straight line. That's interesting. There should be a straight line. I'm not trying to get on the runway again. So that is interesting. These taxiways are a little bit messed up, looks like. Okay, we will follow this. So there is no continuing taxiway routing here. So we will follow this and find ourselves a parking spot back there. I see a couple aircraft. I see a tug over here. So we should be by the terminal now. Let me slow down and take a look, guys. It is so frustrating, but there is another runway. Are you kidding me? Where's the terminal? Here? Well, so be it. Let's park over here, guys. This looks like a parking spot, so taxi light can come off now. We don't want to blind anyone, though there are no marshallers or anybody of that sort. But we will go over here. Looks like this is a parking spot. So we will park here and end the video here. We don't need to taxi around the airport to find the parking spot. So again, default scenery. Sorry about that. Parking brake is set. We'll get the fuel cutoff levers and prop levers to ground idle. That is good. Auto ignition can be turned off, auto feather can be turned off now. We can turn on the anti en engine anti ice for, uh, like an inertial separator, as I explained before, or we can leave it alone because we are getting ready to shut the engines down. So, to shut the engines down, lead air comes here, cabin master comes off, um, taxi light is already off, there is nothing over here that we need to worry, and we'll put the fuel levers to fuel cutoff, that should cut the engines, prop sync to off, we are seeing uh, the RPM drop, we are below 10%, so beacon light can come off now. And avionics master can come off. And clear the warnings. And there you have it, guys. Welcome to Hollywood Burbank. This was a radio navigation video with the King Air 350i, analog King Air 350i. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving a like, and if you are not a channel subscriber but stumbled upon this video, take a couple seconds to hit that subscribe button, please. It helps a lot, and I appreciate your support. Thank you very much, and I'll be seeing you in the next video.